Hello, my name is Edwin Martinez, and uh, I'm here at uh, Wolf Coffee Roasters. Uh, I am the CEO of Onyx Coffee. We are an exporter in Guatemala and an importer in the United States. And uh, we have a farm as well called Finca Vista Hermosa in Huehuetenango, Guatemala. And uh, that's been in our family since uh, 1957. Uh, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about what makes Guatemalan coffees unique. Um, one of the things that stands out to me the most is that we have a very uh, steep terrain. Uh, although we are on the Atlantic and on the Pacific, the, the country is very small and it quickly goes up. We have 23 dialects, so very rich in culture, and 37 volcanoes. So the, the, the quality of the soil is incredible and the diversity of the land is, is great. Um, we have eight to nine different growing regions or microclimates and they're true microclimates. I think there are a number of places in the world that have marketed uh, some different microclimates, but we have a very distinct differentiation that you can trace and, and determine in the cup. For example, uh, in Coban, which is in the northeastern part of the country, uh, it's closer to a thicker jungle, rainforest. Because of that, we get obviously a lot of rain, and it makes it difficult to dry the coffee. And Guatemala is unique globally in that it's one of the few countries that has all washed coffees. Every single bag that leaves a country uh, has a stamp on it. Every vacuum packed box says clean coffee, which implies that it's a washed as opposed to a natural. Um, and some of that goes back to how the original founders of the Producers Association determined what's the best use, what's the highest value of the product that we can produce to compete globally. And they determined that this would be the best processing method so that we could reflect the, the uniqueness of the difference in terroir of these microclimates. So Coban, because of the rain, it's difficult to dry, so you end up with coffees that have a little bit more of a whiny flavor, and some people might even say uh, pulpy, and it starts to be on the edge of ferment, but they do a very good job of stopping it, so you end up with a clean cup and a nice whiny body. Um, Antiguas are probably the most common, and you have a classic trait of crisp acidity. Uh, Antiguas typically are very they're a very light, uh, light to medium body and a medium acidity. And so they're a very balanced uh, cup to enjoy. Where with Denango, where uh, my father grew up and where we do most of our work, um, is probably one of the most remote regions in the country. And what differentiates the cup quality for us is we have a little bit more body and perhaps a sharper uh, acidity. And when that's balanced, it's incredibly delicious and clean. Uh, and you can have a nice clean fish finish even after that intensity. So one of the things that makes uh, I think Guatemalan coffee's most unique is that these flavors can in fact be carried through and differentiate on a, on, a, on a global level and you can differentiate them in the cup. Another thing that makes Guatemalan coffee's unique is we have an unusually high cost of production and there are countries that have a high cost of production due to labor and if you think about it, most coffee producing countries have low minimum wage and oftentimes they're not enforced. So the most expensive coffees often are tied to labor and the quality isn't always reflecting the price that they fetch. Uh, with Guatemalan coffees, because the land is so steep, uh, the challenge of logistically moving coffee around, moving fertilizer, uh, just transportation in general is, is very difficult. To get to our farm, when everything is great, uh, there's no protests, there's no landslides. Uh, you can arrive in Guatemala City, be in the city of Huehuetenango in four to five hours, and then an hour and a half later be at our farm. So a total of six, seven hours. Uh, that trip can easily be 11 hours. Uh, and so it's a, very, it's a very long way to travel. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is the cost from seed to cup. The cost of transportation from our farm to Guatemala City to a mill and to the port is more than getting it from the port of Guatemala to anywhere in the world. Even just the cost to get it from our farm to Guatemala City is more than getting it from the port to anywhere else in the world. So the, the cost of logistics is high and that means that in order to have it be economically sustainable, the quality has to be high enough to fetch a price to cover those added costs. So for better or worse, Guatemala now produces a lot less coffee 
but the lowest quality coffees are a pretty high bar.